So I didn't want to be part of the problem anymore. After uh, living with the Amish for almost 15 years, I uh, kind of got over that. And I wanted to be part of the solution again. And I came back into uh, the real world. Uh, but I came back with a, a changed set of values. Uh, I came back with a techno-Amish perspective on just about everything. And, uh, and I'm uh, still very mission focused. I bought a 140 year old house and despite everyone telling me to tear the thing down and start over again, uh, including my wife, um, we, we did not do that. We made it into a super energy efficient home and, and we still deal with the spiders. Uh, it's seven years later and that's the hardest part about refurbishing an old home, it's the spiders. Uh, <laughs> They don't go away. So, um, uh, the Building Performance Contractors Association is a 12-year-old nonprofit organization dedicated to market transformation for energy efficiency services. So, we're trying to build up the market for uh, contractors that want to get into energy efficiency services. We're an educational organization, so we train contractors to do that work. And we work with homeowners to make sure they understand how important energy efficiency is. Uh, I'm not going to go through all these things that we do, but uh, feel free to connect with me. Uh, I would like to touch on our agenda, which uh, was originally kind of my hidden agenda, but it's become the agenda of the organization somehow. Uh, we we want to grow demand for businesses that want to do energy efficiency work. Uh, we want to create jobs in uh, energy efficiency, and that's a really important part of growing demand. We want to reduce energy costs for homeowners and energy waste for future generations. We want to stop U.S. In, uh, energy dependence on foreign oil, but this last one is probably the most important one to me uh, as I've kind of gone through this process. This, this concept that we're constantly exporting our energy dollars from our communities, from our country, uh, mostly to countries that don't like us and use the money against us, that has got to stop. And uh, that's not a sustainable model, and we don't need to do that. We can, we, can put energy, uh, we can put those dollars back into our own homes and stop exporting those dollars. We don't even notice the impact, but it's all around us. The reason we can't, uh, the reason the Wild Center doesn't have the funding it needs, which I don't know why, uh, but... Uh, I just assume, is because we've been exporting our dollars for energy purposes for so long we don't even notice it anymore. We don't even think about it. So that's my agenda. That's our organization's agenda. And uh, so today I'm going to talk about the envelope. Uh, I'm going to give you a crash course on building science because uh, when you're dealing with the envelope, uh, you're dealing with a uh, series of systems and each one has an impact. And if you if you're trying to make a change on one part of a system, just like in the natural environment, you try to make a change here, something, uh, something can be impacted somewhere else. So I'm going to talk just a little about building science and why that's important. Uh, I liken it to a beach ball filled with uh, metal objects. You know, you push in here, something's going to pop out on the other side. And that's why you have to have an understanding of the big picture of a house as a system of integrated systems within a larger system that we call the environment. And so all these things affect one another. If you, if you try to, if you reduce the, uh, you change out all the light bulbs, the incandescent light bulbs for CFLs, your heating bill is going to go up a little bit because those incandescent light bulbs were, uh, were cranking out heat and now they aren't anymore. You should still do it. It's still a good policy. But, uh, but those are the kinds of things, the unintended consequences of our work that I'd like to talk about today. And the reason I think it's so important is because a lot of you are working on old housing stock here in the Northeast. Uh, some of it is some of the oldest housing stock we have in the country. Uh, you're in one of the harshest climates in the country. And in many cases, you go in there to a building uh, to put on an addition or do a kitchen remodeling, you're probably the only person that's going to see up into those soffits in the kitchen where it's connected perhaps to some other part of the building. You may be the only person that ever touches some parts of this house and, uh, and that's when energy efficiency really makes sense. It doesn't always make sense to call in an energy auditor and say what should I do to my house and have him figure out that uh, what needs to happen. That's an expensive way to do it. If you're going to remove the siding anyway, 
uh, it makes sense to do an air sealing thing when, before you put on the new siding. That's when energy efficiency makes the most sense. And so that's why I'm here to talk about the envelope today. I'm going to just talk a little about uh, building science. I don't know how much you all know about it, but it's an important <coughs> thing uh, for everyone to know if you're working on buildings. If you're making buildings tight, you don't want to make them too tight unless you have the knowledge of building science. So what we have here is a, an image of what we call stack effect, uh, invented by Kevin's father, actually. Uh, the, 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 uh, the tendency of warm air to rise. Uh, and what that does is it creates a, a, a pressure at the top of the envelope. And if that envelope is not sealed at the top of the envelope, that pressure will force uh, conditioned air out through the top of the envelope. And it'll pull in an equal amount of uh, air below what we call that neutral pressure plane that's right in the middle there. Uh, above that, we have hot air that's leaking out. Below that, we have cold air that's leaking in, just to try to put it in summarized uh, terms. So air under pressure will not leave the building without pulling in new air. And, uh, and that's something that uh, is just one of the most basic aspects of building science is the way air moves around a house. Uh, when you have wind hitting a house, it's hitting it and impacting it on both sides of the house. On one side, it's pushing in. On the other side, it's creating a vacuum and kind of pulling the air out. And for a house that has no air sealing, that envelope is affected uh, dramatically in that way. Uh, if a four-letter word is bad, a 12-letter word is three times as bad. And interstitial uh, spaces in a house can have an impact that no one realizes. These in, in, inner walls are not insulated, and yet in many cases they connect the basement to the attic. And there's air moving through there. Uh, there's convection loops within the walls. There's, uh, there's heated air that where the, those spaces start to heat up in between the walls, and they, that air starts to rise too. And in many cases, there's nothing covering those at the top where they hit the attic floor. And they start to pull heat out of the house just because of that interstitial web of walls. So that stack effect it occurs in any house. You know, uh, the taller it is, the more stack effect has an impact. And interstitially, stack effect also has an impact. So when we talk about building science, what we're trying to do, we're working on the envelope here, we're trying to figure out what is the conditioned space and what is the unconditioned space. Uh, we want the, uh, the conditioned space to be within the thermal boundary and also the air pressure, uh, the, the pressure boundary, which is the air sealing of the space. And what we really want to do is line those two up. So if you're going to make a house energy efficient, an energy auditor comes in and determines by his own hand where that thermal boundary is and how to line that up with the pressure boundary. So we want an air, an air sealed house and we want insulation to match up to that air sealed boundary so that we create a very definite conditioned space on the inside and an unconditioned space on the outside. When you tighten up a home in that way, then you could have moisture problems. If you, uh, you know, if there's people and plants and dogs, that's all you need for moisture problems in an, in an energy efficient home. Uh, so moisture is an important thing. Uh, moisture moves with air. It uh, holds more moisture, uh, it holds more heat than, uh, than uh, air that doesn't contain moisture and it creates dynamics in a house as a system. So this is one of the reasons that we want to understand building science because when you make that home a little more energy efficient, uh, we want to make sure we're not creating a problem. Uh, you also don't want that house to be too tight because then the moisture can't ever get out and uh, it'll start to smell funny. And uh, so we, what we really want is controlled ventilation. What we have now in most houses is uncontrolled ventilation. Ventilation's important. Uncontrolled ventilation is sometimes better than uh, no ventilation at all. But what we want is to control the envelope, 
control that ventilation. And so that is a health and safety issue. Uh, we want to make these homes energy efficient, but we don't want to make them unhealthy. So if there's, a, you know, if you're tightening up a home with a moisture problem, it's going to turn into mold. It may turn into an asthma problem for the kids. Uh, and, uh, and, and if you're tightening up a home uh, where the furnace is backdrafting even the smallest bit, uh, you can turn on the fan in the kitchen and you'll start pulling carbon monoxide into the home. And carbon monoxide is odorless and colorless and generally uh, doesn't kill people, but it can make them very sick even at low levels. And you talk to a family that's having that problem and they'll just tell you, oh yeah, the kids always have a cold and, and we think they always get it from my husband because he's always sick. And that is a sign uh, that perhaps there's a slight backdrafting, which uh, in an air sealed home can be a major, uh, major problem. Can actually kill people if you're not careful. So we want people to make homes energy efficient, but that's why we want uh, certification whenever possible. That's why we want you to understand building science before you go out and make homes energy efficient. Uh, it, until you really understand all the dynamics of that house as a system, we don't really want you to do that great a job at energy efficiency. So, uh, and radon, I think this is a radon uh, area. I think there's radon up here. Uh, once you tighten up that home for radon purposes, I mean, uh, for energy efficiency purposes, radon can now become an issue. So uh, in many homes, if you're not going to test for radon, then we uh, will try to get you to make that envelope uh, exclude the basement. So you tighten up that space between the basement and the, uh, and the home. And that's why we do encourage energy auditors and, uh, and building analysts to get certified so that they understand what they're doing. Uh, we want you to go out there and do this work, but like I said, if you don't understand all the dynamics, you could be creating a dangerous situation. So shouldn't try to tighten up that building too much. If you're just going to do one thing to a home, so, uh, and, and that's the, the, the great part about uh, the work that a lot of you are doing uh, is, you know, you may have been called in to do a bathroom remodel uh, and, and that's the time that you can have a big impact on something else, perhaps. Uh, so if you're just going to do one thing on a home to make it more energy efficient, anybody want to wager a guess on what that would be? The attic. Uh, that's a good guess. What did you say? The attic. The attic? Pretty, pretty, um... Ah, very good point. Uh, anybody else? Windows is what everyone says. Yeah, it's true, but uh, the biggest thing is to seal the windows, probably not to replace them. Mike, you already know the answer. Yeah, you want to? Rim joists are very important. Uh, no one's actually said what I think is the most important, though, uh, although everybody here is right. But the very most important thing, if you ask me, is to seal the floor of that attic. So yes, you want to insulate. Uh, yes, you want to replace windows. But what you're really, the first thing, if you're only going to do one thing, you want to seal the floor of that attic. And you want to make sure that that pressure that builds up just below the attic doesn't have any cracks that it can leak out through. That, because that pressure will force the air out through those cracks. And, uh, and then, like I said, bring in more air. So if you seal the floor of that attic with just caulk and foam, you can eliminate uh, a lot of the energy loss. You eliminate that loop, that convective loop that happens up there. But there's a lot of other things you can do, too. Uh, the, the biggest place we find energy savings opportunities is uh, when a house has been modified. Uh, somebody put on a, a porch or, a, uh, or added a room or uh, you know, a garage or something like that, and it's the connectivity that is often overlooked uh, when they're doing that work. People don't think, they never thought about energy efficiency because oil was so cheap uh, and, uh, and heat was, uh, was prevalent. Uh, now we're starting to see the mistakes that we've made. And these are the things that you can have an impact on when you're out there working on homes. And I have some images here which kind of talk about some of these common things that we see in homes. 
So uh, this is up in your attic. A lot of times people will turn the attic into a bonus room uh, for an extra kid or whatever. And they'll put up walls and they'll make a nice space in there. Anyway, uh, you can see at the base of that wall, uh, no one ever thinks about interstitial air connectivity. But underneath that attic, where those walls come and hit up there, a lot of times, it's just open air. And, and the air from the basement is, is flowing up through. And so you put in those walls, and, and people will insulate. And they'll insulate well. But if they don't do the air sealing, and especially where the, the side wall hits the flooring, there's interstitial air coming up through the house, usually. And, and you can't get very nice air insulation. Insulation is not a, an air barrier. And you'll see the insulation get dark over the years. Um, and this, this, it's such an easy fix to, uh, to put in a barrier there on the right. And you can see right under the knee wall, there's a barrier. And you can see the dotted line is where we've created uh, an envelope. So you can seal that with cardboard. I mean, sometimes people will just roll up insulation and stuff it in there. And sometimes that's a, a good thing. I mean, you use sealed insulation. Uh, what we would prefer is what we have here is a piece of board which we've put up against that space, and then we've caulked around it to, to create a real seal. Uh, so that's something that if you guys are out there being asked to put up a bonus room in the attic, uh, that's a place where you can have a huge impact. You know, you don't, it seems like all these things are very small, but you take all the cracks in a house, in your standard house, and you add them all together, and that's what the blower door does, is to add up all those air leakage points and figure out what the size of the hole is, and it can be a hole this big in, a, in your standard house. And so if you can seal up those leaks, it's, it's not so difficult to go around and uh, seal those up, cardboard, foam board, uh, you know, wood, whatever you have, whatever you can use to, uh, to do that. That's what we'd like to see. Uh, and here we have kind of the same phenomenon uh, going up. People will uh, always, uh, you know, have a tendency to put insulation in the walls, and they'll have a tendency to put insulation in the ceiling. All that's good, but you notice right where that wall hits the top of the ceiling, they pr it's really hard to get in there sometimes, and there's generally nothing there. And so just if, if it's not leaking like a sieve in terms of air leakage, it's, uh, it's, it's conducting heat through the, the wood and bringing heat right up from the house into the, uh, into the attic. And, and especially with that stack effect, it's forcing that air into the attic. So those gable walls are uh, important. Uh, balloon framed gables, uh, you know, that's where you get up in the attic and you look, look down in there and you can see all the way down into the basement. Uh, that's some of the older housing stock that we have. Uh, we want to seal the top, of the, the top plate, the floor of the attic. And we want to do that before we put in the insulation, by the way, if that's possible. Uh, I said that uh, a lot of the additions, that's where we see a lot of the problems. People will put on a roof deck, uh, you know, attach it to the house, but they won't think to, uh, to seal off that space. If, if you're working on this, if you're putting on that addition, or if you're working on that addition, uh, you'll probably be the only person who ever cuts into that space to see if they sealed it. I guarantee you they didn't, and no one ever does. Uh, this picture on the left is uh, an infrared scan. And you can see the dark places in the rafters where that air is coming in, moving right into the house. Um, often, that's, that's generally the, the, first, the top of the first floor, so there's no insulation in there. Uh, you know, if, if it's not sealed somewhere out there on the porch area, it's just bringing cold air right into the house. And the heat that's being generated in the house is helping to bring that cold air in. So uh, this is another uh, kind of the same uh, venue. Uh, you know, older houses may not have insulation in the outer walls. You know, we all know that that's uh, very possible. And if you, uh, if you don't deal with the rim joists, which is, you know, the, the walls uh, or the floors, the outer exterior of the floor areas, you're creating a huge venue for air 
to get pulled into the house, move through the house, take away half of the heat, and then move out through the attic. So this is what it looks like on the floor of a lot of your homes that you're working on, the attic floor. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, if you drop a, a penny down into that hole, it's kind of hard to see it right there, but, uh, but it'll, it'll land in the closet down underneath or in the wall of that closet. Um, and so, so that's how, that's, that's a big hole. And that's a big hole that's probably replicated, you know, at the, uh, the point where the porch roof comes on. Uh, maybe there's a big similar hole down in the basement. Uh, all the piping that goes through the, the house, uh, heating ducts and, uh, and plumbing uh, venues and, and all of that uh, creates a whole series of ways that air leakage can impact a house. So it's not always just replacing the windows and working on the outer part of the house. A lot of what we're trying to do is on the inner part of the house. A lot of the parts where we don't tend to get to. We can't even see what's going on in there. That's why when you're doing this work, when you're remodeling the kitchen, you want to look up into those soffits and find out what's going on. And, uh, and you know, you, you, those, those little soffits in the kitchen, they generally have a can lighting over the sink area. Those can lights turn into little chimneys. As soon as they start to heat up, they start to pull warm air out of the house, pull it up into that soffit, and then from there it could go anywhere. And that's a, a, a hard and fast process that's always happening whenever you turn on the lights in those uh, kitchens. Not to mention the attic floor, which is uh, also a place that people tend to put can lights because they're inexpensive, but, uh, but uh, they turn into little chimneys and they just, as soon as you turn those lights on, they start, they're not sealed up on top unless, you know, you bought the expensive ones. Uh, they're not sealed and they just start to turn into little chimneys and pull air out of the, uh, out of the space. Very nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's the hole. And, uh, and so I think I have some pictures of what we would do with a hole like that. Now, uh, you know, uh, again, cost is uh, king when you're doing energy efficiency. We, we try to have some kind of return on investment. But, you know, if you, uh, if you want to do it right, this is what we would uh, encourage. The, this is foam board, cut to fit, slid in there, caulked maybe, and then foamed. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, I've seen people use cardboard very effectively for this kind of thing. Uh, but, obviously, the more you spend, the more you save with energy efficiency. Pardon me? What's the thickness of that? Uh, it's probably two inch, maybe, or uh, three quarter inch. Uh, like I said, the, the key is to, to reduce the air leakage. So, whatever it takes to reduce the air leakage, the more insulation you have in there, the better, uh, obviously, but uh, the first priority to reduce the air leakage, and then you put insulation on top. That's what we would encourage. So uh, split level homes, there are just so many opportunities for energy efficiency in a split level home, uh, and especially one that was built in the 40s uh, where, they, where energy was so cheap that it just didn't even make sense to do energy efficiency work in those buildings. So you can see all the different opportunities for air leakage here, uh, the plumbing chases, the electrical penetrations, the open wall cavities, uh, all of the, the recessed lights, all of these things create avenues for air to move through the house. Uh, and, uh, and this is probably the worst of all. I think this is even, uh, oh, no. Uh, this is just a PDF. The PowerPoint actually shows the uh, air moving through, and it's. Uh, but but what you really want to do is block off that kind of uh, space, because if you don't block off that kind of space, it doesn't matter how much insulation you've got on all three of those uh, wall cavities, air can go right through it, and and you can see that air moving through the insulation uh, by virtue of the dirt that it brings over the years, dirt and dust. So whatever it takes, uh, you know, if you're trying to make a home energy efficient, you determine what that 
boundary is, that pressure boundary. And we want to line up the pressure boundary, which is air sealing, with the thermal boundary. And we want it to be continuous, as continuous as possible. And so in many cases, it's going to make sense for you to uh, create that boundary around the stairwell. It doesn't make sense to work up the rest of it. doesn't make sense to seal the base of the attic if the stairwell is this huge drain on air. So uh, whatever it takes to create that thermal boundary, line it up with the pressure boundary, the air sealing, that's what we want to see. Uh, open soffits, very common problem here. You can see uh, here that uh, we, have some, uh, we have some ducting that's coming out here. And in the old days, nobody ever thought to air seal this. In fact, they thought, oh, we need the ventilation, so it's OK not to. Uh, but really, this cre something like this, where ductwork is actually going through the soffit area of the house, uh, if that ductwork is not sealed, the ductwork becomes part of the avenue, to the, the mechanism for which air is, cold air is brought into the house, mixed with warm air in this case, which is coming from the furnace. And, uh, and, and then, you know, this, this, this piece uh, was taken off to, to show. But look at, look at the, uh, I don't know if you can see it from there. So it's the uh, so so that's the part that I think is instructive here is to look at how how dark that insulation is, and how that's uh, affected the rest of the house. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think in the in the cities uh, you probably have these buildings uh, where there's not much crawl space up in the attic, and there's generally no insulation. These are older buildings, uh, and so. Uh, and, and it's almost impossible to get down into this area because a, a person can just barely fit down into that area. Many of these buildings have never been opened up. Uh, you have to cut into the roof uh, or the ceiling to get into these. And so in this case, and, and in a lot of cases, I got to say, it's a very creative task that you have at hand. <laughs> uh, you've got to be creative. So, so what we're doing down in New York City with these kinds of buildings is we're just packing it here with insulation as much as we can up until the point where we can get in and put up a wall and then we're insulating the rest of this too but uh, but, uh, but but my point with this slide is actually that uh, creativity is uh, is a really important part of this job there aren't as many hard and fast rules on how to make a building energy efficient as you think well, uh, I have other stuff that I could talk about, but I think uh, this is probably a good breaking point in uh, taking questions. Uh.